So as we mentioned, it's uh, the Panama City Nitro. We're calling it the Night of Champions. Yeah, this is coming off uh, from 93 to 01, basically working every week. I mean, you know, I, I, I'd, I, I'd been a quote-unquote workhorse for eight or nine years. So for a summer coming up and I live on the water, Conrad. Not a bad day. I was going to say, okay, I, I'm kind of looking, you know, I, I, I'm going to at least have some time. And you had at least had a little bit of a lighter schedule because even in that era, you know, towards the end of WCW, they were taping Nitro and Thunder on the same night. And they had, they had largely cut out house shows. So you're still doing some travel, but it's not the breakneck pace you had been years prior. Uh, and now, to your point, uh, you get to rest up. You get to heal up. There's no such thing as a wrestler who's working with no injuries. Everybody's got a little something they're nursing all the time. So now, hey, I can hang out with my wife, who's uh, hopefully coming out of the other side of a real challenging situation, and we'll float around uh, Old Hickory for a little bit. And a brand new jet ski. True. <laughs> <laughs> and I could, I, you know, it was springtime was anyway. I do remember saying I, I'm going to get to at least relax. If, but I didn't really give it. Honestly, I didn't really give it. I didn't think that far down the, the like, what ifs. I, I, again, I'm still going to go back up until it really became a reality that, wow, TBS and TNT don't have wrestling anymore. I just, that, that to this day, Jamie Kellner and, and connecting the dots, just, just can't put my finger on it. But yeah. uh, little. I'm Something dirty in the wood pile there. Fraternity brothers, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Read the Nitro book, boys and girls. Hey, let's talk about <laughs> that last Nitro. H had you know, we know that, that that deal goes down just a few days beforehand. So the WWF is now in control of the territory. Um had that deal not closed, do you know what your creative would have been on that last nitro? No. Oh god. Conrad. Well, no, listen, I'm just saying in this time, I know there's chaos, but I also know that you were plugged in. So you knew, uh, you know, these are the guys who were laying out creative. Tell us a little bit about who was handling creative in that era. It, you would have to refresh my memory, but I know it was Harry Taylor and Bill Banks and Jeremy Borash. And I think disco actually had a little bit in there and the, the, the names that were woven and out, I just over the last calendar year, go from Bob Mole to Aaron Blitzstein, who I just got to work with uh, two years ago in, in, in WWE. But it was, it was a real, just an evolving, <clears throat> who's sitting in on the creative this week. I can remember, okay, so as a talent, which I was strictly just a talent those days, I, 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 I can remember packing my bags, Conrad, every week, and I would have two or three tights, because you never know, am I going to need whatever, two or three pair of tights, two or three sets of street clothes. I would wear, uh, I would throw in maybe a street fight stuff. Because I, you know, props would go out and get stuff, but I always like to have my own stuff. I would, I would overpack. <laughs> You'll get to know me. Uh, but, but I mean, I literally would carry so much because we didn't know what we were going to have. Even if they told it to us over the phone, even if a Russo or Ferrar. Or, it could change. Oh, it would change. So I had no idea going into that last Nitro. If I was doing anything, it wouldn't have surprised me if I had been opening match or closing match or not at all. It's just fascinating to me because you know, I'm friendly enough with, with talent these days to know that they usually get a heads up ahead of time. Hey, here's what we're thinking. Maybe they'll take a look at a script. Maybe that'll just be a quick phone call, whatever. But in those days, you literally showed up and they handed you a sheet of paper and here's what it is. And you just hope, okay, everything's in my bag. I'll figure it out. A hundred percent. That is what, when they handed that sheet, you go, okay, let me go off to the room. A couple of times on the nitros, when I first got there, I can remember thinking, okay, this is what was told to me. Let's just hypothetically say on Thursday and Friday. Is it going to stick? Get there on Monday. Wow, it stuck. This is what we're doing. And then it changed two hours later. I mean, that's really the environment we we, we worked in. Uh, chat me up about the night before. You know, a lot of times guys go out and raise hell after the show. We're going to talk about that. But did you have, you know, sort of a, a one last family reunion with a lot of guys the night before? What was the night before Nitro like? I want to say, because I had an appearance on the Saturday afternoon 
saw Brian Road Dog uh, Saturday night. On Sunday, I think I was like, uh, this is crazy recall. I think I waited. We hung out at the beach and did whatever. I think I waited that day and worked out maybe as the sun went down or late in the evening and I went to bed. I, I don't remember any Last Supper. Okay. Um, the next day, you show up to the building. These days, I think call time is like, I don't know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that. In this last night show, are people just showing up whenever they want or do they think, hey, I need to show up early in case somebody else shows up? Or do you recall? I, I remember I was always a guy that got there on time. You got to go back over the last 24 months. There, there were a time that they were fining folks for being laid in yep. the check-in system and got an initial and, you know, this and all, all that kind of stuff. I got there on time, threw my bags, and usually went to catering and, and hung out. The very run-of-the-mill day was what, you know, let's see what happens. I can tell you. The, the, I call it an understated somewhat buzz, like, okay, here we are. We've heard about it for 72 hours. What's really going to happen today? So let's talk about the day, man. You're sitting there in catering, you're hanging out and I'll be damned. Shane McMahon, Gerald Briscoe and Bruce Pritchard walk in. Tell me about it. The first person that I believe I saw was Duncan Leslie. And so for people who don't know who Duncan Leslie is, let's just call him the grand poobah production okay. uh, that I had known. I, if, and I think he was the first one I saw and I'm like, huh, interesting day. Yeah. Very interesting day. And at that time, the soberness of production folks had set in and I'm like, man, you could just tell the vibe was different. Uh, but it was good to catch up with, with Duncan. Um, it, but just, you know, walking around backstage, Shane was very nice, cordial, uh, Bruce was, Hey Jeff. Um, I knew they had their work hat on and, and I could imagine, um, they probably weren't real sure on how things were going to be taken, what was going to be said, maybe what not was going to be said, how things were going to be cooperated. And, and I just remember it was like, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Bruce is here. And do you have a conversation with those guys? Do they ha have a big meeting with everybody? Just take me through your experience with the WWF personnel. Back I've read about that over the years. I, I, yes. I, I mean, I don't remember any specifics about the big team meeting. I, I, I just, no recall. I can remember Bob Ryder, like he would always, he doesn't use the word hypothetical or, or did he didn't use God rest his soul. Didn't use the word hypothetical, but he's like, yeah, can you imagine this? And how's the, you know, just a lot of what ifs and, and questions. But again, there there wasn't a lot going on. And 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 as a talent, I I kept remembering like, I right, who's doing what? And you know, there's no uh, on, on the wall. Here's the card for the night. Here's this for the night. Okay, so now no Shane and Bruce, obviously, and, you know, with Bruce background, right, TV or producing or whatever it is, he's the one that's obviously driving the ship here or is he is it going to be one of those things that whatever terry taylor and and terry taylor just keeps coming to my mind that 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 he was always because me and him go back to him and my father's relationship but like who's wrestling who and how are we doing this just sort of the nuts and bolts is what i was trying to cut through but i don't remember any grand speech or what was said or what wasn't said not a lot of meat on that bone 